Welcome, and thank you for joining us today for this special update for alumni and friends of UT Health Houston School of Dentistry. My name is Esmeralda Diaz, and I am a proud alumni of the school's dental hygiene program and have since returned to become and pursue a doctor of dental surgery. We appreciate everyone who is here with us today, and it is an honor to be your host for the second annual state school event. As a student, I can attest for the extraordinary work that has been done across our institution. From participating as a volunteer to serving as Hispanic Student Dental Association's president, it is a privilege to call the School of Dentistry home. Without further ado, I would like to introduce Dr. John Valenza, Dean of the School of Dentistry, who, has provided, who will be providing our update for today. In addition to his leadership, Dr. Valenza also holds the William N. Finnegan the second distinguished professorship in dental sciences. Following his remarks, we have set aside some time for a Q&A session with the Dean using questions submitted by you. Dr. Valenza, take it away. Thank you, Esmeralda. Well, hello, everybody. I thought a lot about what I can say in 20 minutes. So I've come up with uh, four topics that I'd like to share with you today. Uh, the first one is people. The second one is programs. The third one is facilities and funding together. And the fourth one is about what's next. And if I had to give you a theme about the comments I'm gonna to make today, it would be thriving in a challenging time. Or maybe another way to put it is, what keeps me awake at night? Fortunately for me, I don't have a lot of trouble sleeping at night, but if I did, I could, uh, I could attest it would probably be uh, some of these things. Another way I look at it too is, is what has happened in the past two years that will affect us in the next two to five years. So uh, with that, I'll start with, with people and we'll start first on enrollment. I get asked a lot about enrollment at the school. It's been fairly stable. Uh, we have uh, uh, kept the, the dental, the DDS program at uh, approximately 105 students a year. We have explored increasing our enrollment, certainly prior to the pandemic. Uh, and that may be something that we do revisit again soon. The dental hygiene program has seen a little bit of a change as we've reduced the two-year baccalaureate program or baccalaureate or certificate program, but have added a master's program in dental hygiene. So it's remained in terms of total enrollment uh, similar to what it was uh, before we started the master's program. And then our residency programs have been fairly stable as well. Next up under people has to do with challenges with recruitment and retention. And there's, if there's one thing that I think about quite a bit, it's recruitment and retention. And this has been something that uh, not just at our school, but uh, I'm sure all of you have seen um, across the United States, if not across the world, about the, the fluctuation in employment uh, choices by individuals. Um, for us, obviously, it is recruiting the very best students, recruiting the very best faculty and the very best staff. And um, fortunately, the application pool for the DDS, the dental hygiene and the residency programs has remained very strong the last few years. Um, I think our faculty ranks have been very stable, but we've probably seen a bit more fluctuation with staff. And that's not unusual across all of UT Health. Uh, and perhaps in dental practice, uh, as I know many of you tuning in today are alums or are other friends of the university that, uh, that are practitioners. Another thing under people that's important for us right now is we have some key recruitments that we're in the process of either um, completing or, uh, or starting. Uh, the first one is our associate dean for research. We actually started this search before the pandemic, had to pause it once the pandemic started. But we're now hopefully at, uh, at the end of completing the search for our new associate dean for research. So we're excited about filling that position and having that, uh, that new uh, associate dean uh, take us uh, to the next level with our research program. The other recruitments we have is the associate dean for patient care. Uh, Dr. Shelley Patel serves as our interim associate dean for patient care. And I failed to mention Dr. Ariadne Letra is our interim associate dean for research. Our, our associate dean for patient care research is an internal search among our current faculty. Uh, so that has been launched. Uh, and then two other, three other key recruitments that are about to start are um, the uh, chair of endodontics and the chair of orthodontics. And needless to say, a, a department chair search is, is an extremely important search 
uh, for uh, what the future of those respective departments will look like. Uh, so those searches are just about to begin and uh, will be national searches as well. So another area under people that um, I thought about uh, a lot before the pandemic, but I think about all the time now is wellness, wellness of our folks. And uh, I know that's another area we all see uh, reports and stories and, and uh, testimonies to, to what the pandemic has done in the last couple of years to everybody's uh, mental well-being. And uh, that's certainly a focus of ours as well, uh, an area that we can never do too much in. And uh, something that we try to stay focused on is, is how everybody's doing across, again, student, faculty, staff ranks. Um, and then the last thing under people that I'll mention is uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion. And uh, things that um, sometimes when people hear those terms, it's, um, it's, there are assumptions about what that means, or certainly um, everybody interprets them differently as, as to how it affects either a workplace environment, a home environment. Uh, but just, gosh, look at the city of Houston and its diversity. Um, and I, when I think of diversity at our school, we think of it on, on many levels, whether it be in our educational programs, whether it be across our ranks of faculty, staff, students, and residents. Um, but I guess I draw, especially from my experiences way back when I used to run our GPR program and we were recruiting every, every year for new residents. And while we would have loved to have recruited all of our residents from our school, uh, the diversity that, that residents from other dental schools brought to our program uh, was just tremendous. And, uh, and that's the thing I think about the most is what different perspectives bring to the richness of, uh, of everyone's experience. And, uh, and I've also often said, there's no better representation of the diversity we have than our student organizations. And Esmeralda mentioned that she was previously president or currently president of the Student Hispanic Dental Association. Um, and, um, and what that means, again, when you look at our student organizations and uh, uh, what that represents for, uh, for our, our, our student diversity, for sure. So take home message under this first topic of people is um, as I told an audience a couple of weeks ago at our DDS white coat ceremony, uh, when asked about uh, how do you measure being the best dental school? If that's what we aspire to be, how do you measure that? And for me, it's always been the accomplishments of our people, of our faculty, of our staff, of our students, and especially of our alumni. Uh, so uh, that's, that's the big measure point for me, as well as the pride uh, in what everybody's done, especially the last two years. It's um, unprecedented to say the least. So moving on next under programs, uh, our focus here is further advancing our vision statement. And I know for many of you watching today, the vision statement is, uh, it's, I know that you all can recite it. It's only six words, improving oral health, improving overall health. And when we think about our programs in education and patient care and research, um, I think, and I know so many of us think about, okay, how does that connect into to our vision statement? So when I look at those three areas of, of our mission, education, patient care, research, when I think about education, uh, I think about some new programs that we have. I mentioned the Masters in Dental Hygiene. We also restarted our uh, residency program in oral and maxillofacial pathology this past summer. So excited to get that one on board. And uh, we also are looking to expand what we're doing in dental anesthesiology. Uh, we're actively recruiting for a, a new faculty member for that area. And then in centers, we have numerous centers at the school, but the, the newest one uh, reflects a big focus of our school. And that's uh, the, the Texas Center for Patient Safety and Qu Patient Quality and Safety, led by our Associate Dean, Dr. Muhammad Walji, who is internationally known in, in dental informatics. And that's been, uh, it's been fun watching that. Also under edu education uh, is, is a new curricular model that we're working on. We've been talking about modernizing our curriculum uh, well before the pandemic, um, well before our accreditation site visit in 2019. So with the, um, uh, with the, the discussions in the, the new curriculum, our hope is by this summer that we have, we have outlined the framework for uh, some changes to our curriculum. So stay tuned on that. and. Uh, I'm sure you'll hear more on that uh, as well. Under patient care, speaking of new models, we're also talking about uh, modifying our clinical teaching model. 
There's a number of things we've been talking about again, pre-pandemic and, and since about how we can improve the, the clinical education experience of our students, uh, the patient care experience for our patients. Um, and so um, that's on the horizon as well. Another area is digital dentistry. Uh, Esmeralda and I were just talking about that uh, before the program started today, uh, that uh, the schools made a huge commitment in digital dentistry going back a, a few years of all across the curriculum from preclinical through clinical of, uh, of modernizing what we do in digital dentistry with scanning and milling and, and uh, 3D printing, et cetera. So that's been exciting to watch. And the last thing under patient care is, is our UT dentist faculty practice. I've been very happy and proud of, of what we've accomplished in a relatively short time uh, since we initiated that uh, before we moved to the new building in 2012. And uh, so we've been looking at ways to further expand uh, UT Dentist. And one way that we've recently done is the collaboration with Harris Health in providing the dentists and dental hygienists for the six dental clinics that they have in, the, in, the, in Harris County. The last thing under programs is, is research. Um, we've made some key recruitments this past year, um, added some new investigators, and we've had a number of faculty that have uh, uh, attained some significant uh, awards from uh, the federal government and other uh, organizations that sponsor research. So we're excited about that. Um, research space will always be a challenge for us. It's a challenge across UT Health right now. That's actually a good sign. Uh, versus having a bunch of unused uh, uh, research space. So uh, we continue to explore ways to expand research space for our, our investigators and, and support them. So under topic number two, programs, the take-home message is modernizing our curriculum uh, and clinical teaching model, expanding clinical care, and expanding research. We aspire to be top 10 in the United States among dental schools in research. Next up, topic three is facilities and funding. First under facilities, um, uh, while this refers to the overall school, not just a building, but February 11th, uh, just last week, was our 117th anniversary of the school. So that makes us uh, the oldest dental school in the state of Texas, I think by two weeks over uh, Texas A&M, formerly Baylor in Dallas. Um, and as far as things going on with the building, I, I mentioned uh, we moved into it in 2012. Uh, we are relocating our advanced uh, pediatric dentistry residency program from uh, elsewhere. Uh, it's over in the medical center by Texas Children's. We're moving it into our building. So renovation of space for that uh, uh, clinical facility will begin next month. And in order to do that, we have to relocate our student center. So we're working on an alternative location within our building to uh, support our students for um, uh, a place to retreat to. And um, along with that also is to complete some renovations to our library. And it may seem strange and, and our building still feels so new to us to be doing renovations, but uh, things change and, um, and, and the way we teach and uh, students needs change. And so we have a two phase renovation for our library. We've completed the first phase and thanks to funding from UT system on the first phase and the second phase, we, we expect to move forward soon on the, the second phase. And then the last thing in our facilities I'll mention is thanks to many of you who donated uh, to our mobile dental van effort. Uh, we have purchased a new mobile dental van to replace the one we have that's, that's got a lot of years and a lot of miles on it. And uh, by hopefully this fall, we'll have a new mobile dental van online. And then the second part of this third topic is, um, is funding. Um, so we're on fiscal year. That runs from September 1 to August 31st. Uh, the last fiscal year that ended August 31st of 2021 was actually one of the strongest financial years we've had. Uh, we had a very strong rebound in our clinical care programs. Our, our, our patient clinics revenue represents about one third of our total budget for the school. And uh, we had a very, very strong year. Um, philanthropy, it was a record year for us. It's one of the strongest years we've, we've had since we recruited funding for the new building uh, back in 2005, six, seven, and eight. Um, uh, it, was a, it was a great year for us in, in fundraising. So thanks to everybody that, that gave there. Um, one other thing I'll mention under funding is as many of you have seen due to inflation and other pressures, secondary to COVID, uh, it's, it's affected salaries. 
And we have done a number of things this year, whether it be merit increases, but also a market analysis that when you wrap all that together, uh, we have increased the funding to in the funding for salaries for our faculty and staff by about 12%. And that's a little over $3 million. Um, so that'll be something we're going to have to address as we move into the next fiscal year and look at how that impacts our budget. But for now, uh, it was something we wanted to do, something we had to do. Again, going back to my comments about recruitment and retention. So the take home message on topic three is to complete several building projects, uh, to, manage, to, to manage this balance that's always there between uh, funding all parts of our mission and operation, let's say the, the tension, if you will, between uh, research funding and, and uh, clinical care funding uh, to increase our revenue and uh, increase our financial strength uh, while managing these higher costs, whether they be personnel, uh, PPE, or other things that uh, we've all seen increase in cost. So, so the last topic, topic four, is what's next? Uh, what else uh, will we be working on? Uh, we have refreshed our strategic plan. Uh, in, in some organizations, you do a strategic plan, it tends to go up on a shelf and collect dust, but that's not the case with us or really any dental school as required by our accreditation uh, uh, organization, CODA. So um, we have just refreshed our strategic plan and uh, we'll be uh, publishing that in, in just the next few weeks. Uh, I mentioned faculty, staff, and student wellness uh, uh, earlier, but that, that will be something we continue to work on, um, especially this coming year. Budget, I, I mentioned that, that's obviously high on our list uh, as we move forward. Uh, philanthropy and giving and the power of giving. Um, I get asked all the time about where can people make a difference? And uh, uh, there's so many areas of, of need in the school and, and I always throw it back on the donor. What are you passionate about? Uh, what is it that uh, when you think about giving, where would you like to see that any, any donation you make will, will make a difference? And the last thing is the further growth of our PACE Center. Most of you are familiar with our PACE Center that uh, is an acronym for Practice Consulting, Alumni Relations. Uh, communications and education for our CE program. So um, the Pace Center is, is about five, six years old now and uh, has, has done tremendous things for especially our alumni. So I'm very, very pleased at what they've done there. So uh, on the last uh, point here, um, our take home message is um, under what's next and what else we'll be working on. Uh, number one is maintaining our passion, maintaining our passion for what we do on behalf of our students and faculty and staff and patients and, uh, and the public. Um, as difficult as the past two years have been, it's also been an incredible opportunity for us to step back, take a look, look in the mirror uh, under a bright light. Um, and, you know, when I, I think about the last few years, I, I, I'll ask you, you know, what words come to your mind when you think about COVID? Uh, disruption, uh, resilience. Uh, for me, one word is pivot is that we're, we've constantly been pivoting, adjusting, whether it be remote lectures versus in person, how we do certain things in clinic. Um, so this coming year, uh, we will focus on uh, what innovations and lessons learned um, that we're gonna retain when we don't have to do them because of a pandemic. What, what have we learned uh, from all the changes we've made that uh, what are we gonna keep, what are we not gonna keep? So, um, I'll close in saying that um, along those lines of what we'll do and not do, it reminds me of a book by Marshall Goldsmith that says, what got you here won't get you there. And I think we can all relate to that. So thank you all. And Esmeralda, I'm going to yeah. toss it back to you. Thank you, Dr. Valenza. So now we will be transitioning to our Q&A session. Um, we'll be answering questions that you submitted prior to the event. Just as a reminder, we will try to get to as many questions as possible, but we will not be answering any live questions. Okay, well, I'll start by asking you, so what got you interested in dentistry? And first, of course, it was dental hygiene. Dental hygiene. But even when you were in dental hygiene, was dentistry always in the back of your mind or what? It, it was there. It was always a possibility for me. Um, when I first got introduced to dentistry, I was 16 years old and I was volunteering at Bering Omega Dental Services, now known as Avenue 360. But at the time, they were only servicing patients that had HIV AIDS. 
And that's where I truly learned how to care for patients. And that's where I learned a lot about dentistry. And that's where I love, I fell in love with dentistry. So after about two summers of volunteering there, I knew that a career in dentistry would fulfill my desire to really help people. So after you finished dental hygiene, you practiced some, and of course, you came back and taught at the school. I did, I did. So how has that path been back to the dental school for the, the, the DDS program? Um, you would think it would have been an easy, you, it, would, it would be an easy one. Now, I had, I worked for some pretty great dentists that trained me along the way, that took me under their wing, that really mentored me, and um it was a hard decision between hygiene and dental because being in the high teaching in the dental hygiene program, I loved what I did. Yeah. I, I loved what I did. So I, I cried when I found out I was accepted because it was tears of joy, but also tears of, you know, I'm going to leave something that I love for something else that I love. Well, of course, you and I have talked often about this passion you have for teaching is something that uh, yeah. we hope that someday re recruit you back as faculty. Absolutely. So we you know, I've talked about that. What about, um, so your experiences, uh, you were class president when you were in dental hygiene. Too. I was. And then you mentioned, uh, we talked about the president of the, uh, the Student Hispanic Dental Association. So what's, what have those experiences, those leadership experiences been, for, been like for you? Um, you know, it's kind of been challenging with COVID um, lurking around the corner, um, but it, it was really challenging with students to try and motivate them to join an organization when I couldn't promise them that we would be able to meet in person um, every month. But um, we were able to have one social this semester and I got to talk to students one-on-one -on -one and just see what their experience was. Um, but they were so happy to let me know about their experience, whether it was doing a volunteer event, whether it was doing a Spanish education class, we got our students to um, really get involved in mentorship as well as apply for scholarships and get scholarships from the Houston Hispanic Dental Association. So just hearing them talk about how exciting and how great the Houston, sorry, the Hispanic Dental, the Hispanic Student Dental Association was, um, it was validation to me that, you know, I served my organization well, even in the hardest of times. Yeah. So. Well, you know, you mentioned the ability or inability for organizations to meet in person. And yeah. uh, I'll share this for the audience as we were talking about it at the student council meeting today. And we talked about it yesterday at the monthly school leadership about about as we all see the, the, the pandemic numbers come down, um, at least new cases uh, in, in many areas where we still have very high hospitalizations and, and deaths that are occurring. And, um, you know, so many folks, uh, states, uh, organizations, et cetera, looking at, well, where, where do we go from here as things seem to be getting better? Can we relax what we're doing and so forth? And, and I think the message is that uh, uh, we're careful about yeah. how fast we relax things. Uh, in relative terms for me as dean, it was relatively easy easy is maybe not the best word, but in comparison, relatively easy to step into all the things we did because of the pandemic, what's harder is stepping out of them. Right. Because you don't know what's, well, didn't know what was ahead even when we stepped into them. But uh, uh, so in our discussions today and yesterday, we, we talked about the likelihood that the, the semester will continue as it is till, till the end in May, um, as far as what we're doing online. And of course, all of our patient care and all of our, our uh, preclinical labs and simulation have been in person. Um, but I know um, there was discussion today about, especially for student organizations, to mm -hmm. try to work to, to allow the organizations to get back, to get back in person. Because yeah. I know how important that is for all the organizations. Yeah. And uh, especially if I'm a first-year student, the organizations to me are more on a screen versus, you know, that, that personal touch. Right. Yeah. Well, like I said, I think students have really been resilient through this whole thing and really adapted to using WebEx and Zoom calls and, you know, playing interactive Spanish education games over WebEx yeah. and Zoom. So I mean, what choice have we had? Right? Yeah. So, yeah. well, last question I'll ask you is, um, so what are your career goals once you graduate? Well, I think like any soon-to-be graduate, it's to find a job, <laughs> preferably private practice, um, just really looking for something that is going to have great mentorship there where I can hone in on my speed and my skills. Um, but 
I, I want to grow with the practice, with the community, but really I'd like to stay involved with organized dentistry. The Greater Houston Dental Society has really been a great mentor to all of our students in ASDA, as well as a Hispanic Dental Association. Um, but the one closest to my heart is to get back to the school and uh, give some of my time to volunteer with the students and be a clinical educator. Great. And, so, you know, you mentioned organized dentistry. Yeah. I, that's one thing that I, I've been so proud of our school about is, is our engagement with organized dentistry and not just the Greater Houston Dental Society. I mean, the, the surrounding areas, I, I mean, we have faculty who lecture in, in uh, all across the state, uh, whether it be in the, in the Valley or West Texas or, or whatnot. And so um, that's one of the, you know, again, talking about um, how do you measure success? How do you measure what is a good dental school? And I think that engagement with, with organized dentistry is just invaluable. So. Absolutely. Okay, that was my last question. All righty, are you ready for yours? <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> I've got hard ones. Okay. Okay, so what is the School of Dentistry doing to expand its efforts in diversity, equity, and inclusion? So um, I actually had a meeting this morning with our leadership, our, our diversity team. Um, you know, many institutions have a, a diversity, uh, whether it be an associate dean or director or whatnot. But uh, a few years ago, instead of creating a single position, I thought, well, we need we need to represent faculty, staff, and students. And so uh, we have a three-member diversity team and uh, they've been working very hard uh, as have a, a number of working groups that they put together uh, late last calendar year. And we're just now seeing the reports from there. And so it, it begs the question, okay, with all this feedback now from those teams, uh, we now have a lot of input on what we should do next because I don't profess to be the one that, that says this is what we should do. And I, I think it, it has to come from, from all of us. And, uh, you know, we recently had Diversity Week, and I think that's wonderful. And we will always do that. And it allows us to, to really do some great, fun stuff. And, and really, people have the opportunity to, to shine with uh, their culture and heritage and, and all sorts of things. Um, but now that we have this this uh, feedback from, from uh, so many folks at the school, uh, the diversity team is going to work on with, with a larger council that we have, they're going to work on putting together an action plan on things that we can do. So the diversity is, is just a continuum for us. It's not, it's not like a clinical licensure exam where it's a, a one shot deal uh, sort of thing. And then the other thing I'll mention that is critical and ties back to, to modernizing our curriculum is we have so much room for improvement in integrating diversity, equity, inclusion in our curriculum. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, talking about social determinants of health and, and what it means to treat an underserved population and uh, et cetera. So um, that'll be an area I'll be looking at as we put together the changes to our curriculum is, is integrating that aspect of diversity, equity, and inclusion in there too. Awesome, that's great. All right, so for our next question, how can alumni stay connected to the School of Dentistry and help support the school's mission? Yeah, I'd like to say that that's pretty easy for anyone that makes the effort, especially today with technology. Uh, I mean, if anything, we've all seen that the pandemic has led to, uh, granted, you're not in person as much, but there are so many people that can attend now through WebEx, Zoom, et cetera, yeah. that they weren't able to do in person. I, I mean, even events, I'm getting a little off the subject, but even events like we had uh, last year a retirement gathering via Zoom for a, a, a staff member. And the staff member had people from all across, the United, friends from all across the United States that wow. tuned in. And they wouldn't have been able to come in person. Some, some maybe would have, but, but uh, you know, even though they weren't in person, they were there. And um, uh, so, um, so I think that's that's one thing that's that's worked for us on that. And uh, um, so, yeah, I think for students, it's helped immensely as well. N now, going through this process of doing online, um, just being able to catch up from being on rotation, um, so it's been very helpful. But I I'll mention one other thing, especially with with alums, is um, you know, I often say we're always looking for talent. Do you remember that too when you're thinking about Absolutely. Uh, but um, especially generalists for our, our largest department, general practice, uh, there's 
all sorts of opportunities in all departments, but especially in that one for volunteer. So if somebody is, is not, doesn't have a background in teaching, um, we also offer a program to private practitioners uh, in uh, preparing them for being educators. And uh, uh, so there's that opportunity as well. And then going back to the engagement with the organized dentistry. I mean, we have faculty and staff that are on committees on the Greater Houston Dental Society. We have uh, the TDA, the Greater Houston Dental Society, um, and ADA that comes into our building, especially, you remember that when you started at, at orientation, you saw folks from organized dentistry, you saw alumni of folks come in. So, um, so that's been really, really good. Yeah, it has. I think it's just getting connected to, to see what it is that you can do. Yeah. Um, for our next question, question, what are the next big opportunities in digital dentistry and how is this school of dentistry staying at the forefront of oral health research? So on the digital dentistry, as I mentioned, you know, we, we made a commitment to that uh, a few years ago. We have a wonderful director and Dr. Mm -hmm. Michelle Thompson that, uh, that oversees that. Um, and um, we've slowly but surely been progressing. But uh, as you may know, I don't know if this is something that, that trickled down to the students, but mm -hmm. certainly the faculty know that last summer we, we said, okay, by, the sum, by this summer of 2022, uh, we're going to basically flip the uh, amount of activity we have in dental, yeah. digital dentistry. I think, I think we've gotten to the point of maybe 25% of our cases were done digitally as of the end of last academic year. Our goal is by this summer, we're at like 80% doing digital cases. Obviously, not 100% of the cases we see are suitable for digital uh, within the, the uh, dental school environment. But my goal is that when you graduate, you can say that on more than one occasion, you did a one appointment crown. Yeah. And, it's my goal too. <laughs> and, you know, that's, that's where we are. I mean, we, we've invested, as I said, in, in scanners and millers and, and people and training, mm -hmm. uh, spent a lot of time with training on our faculty. And uh, so, um, so on the digital dentistry side, that's, that's what I look for. And then on the other part on the oral health research, um, I'm very excited about the finalists we have for our research dean. And obviously, the research is done by all of our faculty that are involved with research. But, uh, but we need, obviously, a, a, a leader to connect people and to help move us forward in, in achieving our goal, which I said earlier is to be top 10 among U.S. dental schools in research. So that's we are committed to that goal. Awesome. And I'd like to add on about the digital dentistry. I'm actually a product of that. Um, we, Dr. Thompson has started a program where she's got super users for each color practice, and that student will train other students in that practice or just be there to help. But it is, it is turning things around for what's going on in clinic. Good, good. things. Good things are happening. Good. Glad to hear that. So our next question, the School of Dentistry, Dentistry is celebrating its 10th anniversary of its current building at 7500 Cambridge. What does the future look like for the school's facilities and physical space? Yeah, and of course, we talked a little bit about that with uh, uh, bringing advanced pediatric dentistry in, the student center and the library. Um, you know, uh, we could take, I could take an hour talking about, about that building and design elements and whatnot, but um, you know, we have to continue to look at how to improve our needs in that building and, and how has COVID affected our needs in that building? Um, are we gonna need as many lecture halls moving forward as we have at the moment? Um, I remember even when we were designing the building back in 2007, eight, and nine, we asked ourselves, does a 21st century dental school need a library? And we quickly realized we do. We needed a place for students to retreat to to study, and especially with where we moved to. There just wasn't, there weren't many places, other buildings immediately around the, the building, certainly not a library down on the south campus for students to go to. So um, I mentioned the library renovations. I mean, that's a product of, of your, or an answer to your question as well. You know, we realized a few years ago that the library that we had opened the building with does not fully meet students' needs as much uh, today. And so again, thankful to UT system for giving us funding to, to renovate that. You, you know, Absolutely. in the library, we've increased the number of study carols and group study rooms and things like that. So, so we'll continue to look at those areas. But I, again, going back to, to my comment about what are we gonna continue to do once we don't have to do it due to the pandemic? And 
one of the big areas is going to be what is our need for classrooms? You know, what are we going to do in terms of our lectures? Are we going to have a, a hybrid, a, a mixture, or will we still need what we have? So, okay. And for our last question, how can philanthropy make an impact at the School of Dentistry? Gosh, um, in any way that that a donor is passionate can make a difference. And I, I said earlier, I, I often get it. And it is nice to hear when somebody says, here, just, I want to make a gift, use it wherever you want. And obviously, for me, it's like, well, that's great. I have total flexibility on it. But I always come back to the, to the, the donor and say, well, what is it you're passionate about? You know, what is it you want to see? Where do you want to make a difference? Is it in a student with a scholarship? Is it uh, supporting the faculty? Um, you know, in what area? So, um, we have done remarkably well from when I started as dean in 2009. Um, I think of most of the departments had very few endowments, uh, and now most of them have, uh, have, have pretty good inventory endowments. But my goal is that we are uh, at least average among U.S. dental schools. And I tell you right now, we're still well below U.S. dental schools in terms of the endowments that we have. And Endowments are one of the, the best ways to make a difference because they're forever, they're permanent, and they're always growing and they're always spinning off each year funds for the holder to use uh, to the intent that the donor had. Uh, so, and um, I know the viewers have it on their screen there. The, the, uh, uh, and if they want to support is the, the texting of SOD Dean to 91999 and uh, and we're happy to talk to folks uh, about uh, about giving because I mentioned earlier the previous fiscal year was a record year for us in giving. And you think, gosh, in the midst of a pandemic, but people still give. And uh, whether it be uh, dollars to use now, whether it be plan gifts, uh, however they choose to give. So, uh, but but to finish answering your question, my ultimate goal is the naming of the school. Our medical school's named, our nursing school's named, and um, I think it's uh, I think it'd be great if the dental school is next. And so um, that sort of level, we're talking about a real transformational gift that really uh, uh, changes the game for for the school. So uh, that's that's my highest priority on fundraising. So. Oh, well, it's exciting to look forward to. Yeah. Awesome. So. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Valenza, and thank you all for attending our event today. I hope you learned, you enjoyed learning about. Um, new uh, and recent developments at the School of Dentistry. We look forward to seeing you to seeing each other in person soon. Have a good evening.